10 Things You Didn't Know About the Dark Past of Wayne Gretzky Number 10. He has an unofficial rule named after him. Gretzky and his fellow Edmonton Oilers teammates, including future Hall of Famers Mark Messier, Glenn Anderson, Paul Coffey, and Grant Furr, were so dominant in the 1980s that from 1984 to 1988, they won the Stanley Cup four times in five years. Much of the success was due to their 4-on-4 on-ice order, in which minor penalties given to both teams would place one player from each side in the penalty box. Since Gretzky and the Oilers were so successful on the ice in small numbers, given the so-called penalties, the NHL implemented the Gretzky Law, requiring teams to compete at full power. Number 9. Hockey wasn't the only sport Gretzky was involved in. While hockey was the only sport he played at the professional level, Gretzky was one of the Canadian Football League's Toronto Argonaut owners. In 1991, Gretzky became a minority owner of the football team along with the notorious Los Angeles Kings owner Bruce McNall and actor John Candy. Whether it was a pure hobby or a successful business venture, Gretzky's name was also carved into the Grey Cup, the championship trophy of the CFL, in the first year of his ownership after the team's championship victory. Number 8. He was a captain or alternate captain all his life until he played for the New York Rangers. The Great One moved east and made his debut with the Broadway Blue Shirts beginning in 1996 after being traded to St. Louis Blues for a one-year stint in the 1995-1996 through 1996 season. Yet something was lacking. During his career from Montreal to Los Angeles to St. Louis, Gretzky was wearing C from the captain on his sweater, but not in the Big Apple. The title belonged to his former Oilers teammate Mark Messier, who led the team with alternates Brian Leach and Adam Graves as its captain. Being the lucky one often doesn't come with perks. Number 7. Gretzky made 50 and more in 50. It's incredible when a player can score more than 50 goals in a season, but in their first 50 games, what about this? Gretzky scored and exceeded the coveted 50 goals in 50 games mark in his second season for the Oilers, previously reached by Montreal Canadiens legend Maurice Rocket Richard in the 1944-1945 through 1945 season, and the New York Islanders winger Mike Bossy in the 1980-1981 through 1981 season. The accomplishment of Gretzky is even more impressive when you remember that he scored his 50 goals in his first 39 season games. Gretzky finished the season with 92 goals, an NHL record, and in the following two seasons, with the Oilers at his back, he would reach the 50 and 50 mark twice more. Number 6. Gretzky is easily the most valuable player. The NHL awards the Hart Trophy to the most valuable player every year, and Gretzky has won a record nine times in his career. In fact, he was so valuable that from the 1979 through 1980 season to the 1986 through 1987 season, he won the trophy a record eight straight times with the Oilers. Pittsburgh Penguins great Mario Lemieux would break the streak and take the Hart in 1987 through 1988. But in 1988 through 1989, Gretzky nabbed it once again. The other three major North American sports leagues, including the NBA, NFL, and MLB, have called him MVP more times than any player. Number 5. Canadians treated him like royalty. When Gretzky tied the knot with his girlfriend Janet Jones, whom he met as a celebrity judge on a dance contest show called Dance Fever, Edmonton people went wild and named the event the Royal Wedding. Hundreds of Edmontonians lined the streets, leading over 600 wedding guests to St. Joseph's Basilica, where the pair were wedded in a lavish ceremony. The Edmonton Symphony Orchestra performed music. Joan's wedding ring reportedly cost $250,000 and her dress $40,000. Rumor has it that Gretzky also ordered champagne crates costing $3,000 a bottle. The Great One did not spare any expense. Number 4. His professional debut wasn't in NHL In 1978, several young stars were courted by the World Hockey Association, a major NHL rival that eventually folded. Taking advantage of the now-defunct NHL rule that no one under the age of 20 should be selected or signed a contract, on June 12, 1978, Nelson Scalbania, owner of the Indianapolis Racers of the WHA, signed 17-year-old Gretzky to a contract of $1.75 million for a 7-year term. Gretzky only played for the Racers about eight times before the team went bankrupt and he was traded to the Edmonton Oilers, who were then a part of the WHA. Fast forward one year later and the WHA folded and the Oilers joined the NHL in 1979. Number 3. The Canadian government had been involved when he was exchanged. It's simply known as the trade in the annals of hockey history, but there was nothing simple about it for many people. Gretzky was traded to the Los Angeles Kings on August 9, 1988, 
three months after winning the Stanley Cup with the Oilers. This was a shock to Canadians, and such a big deal that Nelson Reese, a member of Canadian Parliament and the new Democratic Party House leader, officially demanded that Prime Minister Brian Mulroney block the exchange from happening in the Canadian House of the Commons. Unfortunately, there was nothing the Government of Canada could do about it, and the NHL approved the deal. Number 2. Two national anthems have been changed for him. All good things must come to an end, as they say. And Wayne Douglas Gretzky's glorious career ended on April 18, 1999, in a 2-1 overtime loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins at Madison Square Garden. Since the game was between two American teams, they played both the American and Canadian national anthems to honor Gretzky. Yet, instead of the standard lyrics to the Canadian anthem, singer Brian Adams performed We're Gonna Miss You, Wayne Gretzky, instead of We Stand On Guard For Thee. John M. Moranti, longtime anthem performer for the Rangers, performed O'er the Land of Wayne Gretzky instead of O'er the Land of the Free. Number 1. He is among 10 players to have the standard waiting period waived for immediate induction into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Gretzky's retirement in 1999 was such a massive deal that when he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, they opened up a collection of 2,300 square meters of Gretzky memorabilia. The collection's items included the skates he wore in his last game and the goal into which he scored his 802nd goal, a league record at the time. That's all for this video. What did you think of the list? Be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe so you don't miss a video.